it going my truant people, Dr. Slacking the Slacking Doctor back on Pokemon Showdown with week 5 of the PEBA PEBA. This week we go up against my man Strumpful, coach of the PSV Ente Hoven. Uh, one of my best friends in this community, one of my first friends in the draft community. He's an awesome, awesome battler, one of the uh, terrible, terrible Swedes, the uh, important member of Team Slask who won Owl. This man was coming to stay with me the same week that we battled, I believe, or the week after we battled, I don't quite remember the date. Uh, but yeah, the first person that I met through Pokemon Online that I then met in real life as well. Just genuinely one of the nicest people around, really, really good guy. Uh, also, you guys may know him from doing waiver wire stuff for GBA and everything else. So, pretty well known in the community, pretty cool guy. He was undefeated going into this game, I believe this is week 5, so I believe he was 4-0 going into this game. And we had a very, very difficult match. I'm just going to read to you guys what his team was and what we're particularly worried about. Uh, so, he has Celesteela, Milotic, Greninja, Moltres, Rotom, Diancy, and that's Mega Diancy, one of his favourites. Roserade, Reuniclus, Garchomp, Licky, Licky, and Gumi, the mascot, or the baby mascot there. No, the mascot, sorry. There. And uh, that's a really, really scary draft, in my opinion. In particular, this man with Celesteela terrifies me. It's a, probably the best Pokemon in draft format. And this is one of the best coaches I know in draft format with it. So that is terrifying. Milotic is a monster. Greninja is a monster. Uh, Mega Diancy, he is so comfortable using. Reuniclus is a staple of his team. And Garchomp has been racking up the kills this season. So they were the ones I was particularly afraid of. However... I felt like I had a really good matchup here. Well, not a really good matchup, but I felt I had a solid matchup here. And I had a lot of confidence in the team I built. And I really believed that I could beat Stromful in this game. Going into this, I really thought, I think I'm going to get him here. So, I'm going to go over the team and why I kind of felt that way. Uh, we brought a Choice Specs Inferno. Again, I should say, this week we didn't have much time to prep at all. Uh, we actually had to cut the mocks short because Stromful was having an allergic reaction. He has bad hay fever. He had to go to the shops before they closed and he's an hour ahead of me. So we battled much earlier than I would have liked to make sure that he gets to shop to get his allergy medicine. Uh, but that meant that I couldn't really mock properly or prep like I wanted to. Which is unfortunate, but that's fine. I should have been more prepared and should have got it done sooner knowing when the battle was supposed to be. So moving on, uh, we decided to bring a Choice Specs Inferno. Shout out to my front office for helping me build for this one. Uh, this is enough speed to speed creep. Um, probably, yeah, because it's timid. This would be enough speed to speed to creep Garchomp. Uh, with max special attack and the rest in HP, pretty simple. Overheat, Focus Blast, Vacuum Wave, and Hidden Power Rock. This was really hard because I kind of wanted to run Hidden Power Ice for the Garchomp. It seems it's most likely switch in. Um, however, the Moltres also worked really well as a switch in because it res resisted Overheat and Focus Blast. And I figured that the Garchomp, once I revealed as a special set, wouldn't really want to take a Focus Blast at all. Um, so I figured that the Moltres would be his most likely switch in later on in the game. So we decided to run Hidden Power Rock, or I decided to run Hidden Power Rock. Um, I don't think my front office were happy with that, but that was just the decision that I made. And that's kind of how I do these builds, is that if there's something that I feel most confident with, then I will always trust my gut, because ultimately I have to win and lose on my own when it comes down to it. Next up we have How Now Blue Cow. This is a leftover Sap Sipper set. I thought the likelihood is he would bring Z Celesteela, because it is only Z Mon on his draft. I thought it would be a totemized setup Z Celesteela. However, just on the off chance that it wasn't, and it was a leftovers Leech Seed set, uh, we needed to make sure we had a switch in for that thing, so we brought Sap Sipper Mill Tank with Seismic Toss, Stealth Rock, Milk Drink, Heal Bell. This is pretty much the set I've been running most weeks. It just wears things down with Seismic Toss, gets rocks up, and acts as a bit of a cleric for the team. Max Physical Defense, because I figured that he'd probably be a physically attacking Celestia with like Heavy Slam and stuff. Next up, we have Fedanti the Durant. First game, this has come to one of our two Z captains here. Um, with the Electrium Z, with Exazer, Iron Head, Thunder Fang, and Substitute. This thing was very much designed to kind of lure in the Celesteela and then KO it. Celesteela was the most important thing to kill on his team. And not because it was his best mon, but because it was his best check to my sweeper, which was Mega Altaria in this game. So I just wanted to make sure that I pressured that Celesteela for a minute one and broke it as early as possible. Uh, so we would potentially lure it in with an X scissor. We could substitute on the Reuniclus, which I expected to switch out as soon as I came in. We could sub and then potentially just break things down with X's at Iron Head and Z Thunder Fang. Uh, I really, really liked this set. Uh, I think it had a lot of utility in this game. Potentially could win the game on its own, quite frankly, if I got behind a sub. It had a great speed tier against his team too. Um, so yeah, I was really, really happy with this one. 
Next up, Keanu Reeves. We brought a choice Specs Porygon Z this week. Pretty bulky with not much speed, but max modest special attack. The reason being this was exactly what I'm talking about, pressuring Celesteela. This thing demanded that Celesteela came in. It said, look, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to press choice Specs Tri-Attack and everything else on your draft will die. Everything else will go down in two hits. So you need to bring Celesteela in. And, and that's the reason that I have this set particularly. Threatening things with Thunderbolt for the Milotic, Ice Beam for the Garchomp, and Shadow Ball for the Reuniculus. Now, I didn't actually run the calcs on this one, but after the game, Checkmate Ben pointed out to me that Shadow Ball did the exact same as Tri-Attack. But Tri-Attack was way more spammable, so I should have ran maybe like Toxic or something over Shadow Ball. Um, that's something that you live and you learn as you go on. Shout out to Ben for making me aware of that. I think if it's a base 80 move, it does the same as adaptability, adaptability boosted try attack. So basically needs to be a higher power than that to be worth running as coverage on Porygon Z, really. Um, unless it's four times effective, of course, like Ice Beam. Um, and this set, as I say, was really to bring out that Celesteela. Let, next up, not last up, next up we have the Amanda Buzz. Uh, this set was a bit of a weird one. This was, again, a bit of a cock-up with not having enough time to prep. This should have been my hazard removal. However, I realized when I was in the battle that I forgot Defog. So I had foul play for potential uh, setup mons, things like Sword Stance uh, Garchomp. Although I thought if it was Sword Stance Garchomp, it would probably be Rocky and Z with Stone Edge. Um, but nevertheless, this was there just to pressure that. If he tried Sword Stancing on me, I could just click foul play. Uh, also Whirlwind because I had thought he had a very good chance of being sub Garchomp or maybe even sub Lefty's Leech Seed Celesteela. And in either of those cases, I wanted to Whirlwind him out. I didn't want him to set up for me. And he's said before that he feels my team can be substituted on pretty well. So knowing that he thinks that of my team and knowing how much he loves to run sub on most of his builds, he has some sort of substitute mon. Certainly he beat me with sub Mega Gardevoir in the Owl. Uh, I thought that it was worth having Whirlwind. Then U-Turn and Roost with Hindsight. I think I maybe could have taken U-Turn off for Defog. But, you know, that's kind of what happens. Last but not least, I don't know why it's Physical Defensive set. I think, as I say, it was for that Garchomp. Uh, last but not least, we have Mega Altaria with Return, Flamethrower, Dragon Stance, Roost. Flamethrower was just so that I could hit the uh, Celesteela for a little bit of damage at least. Um, with a special attack dropping Nature, so we weren't going to do a ton, but at least we could touch it. And then I figured that if we broke the Celesteela, if I go back to his draft, you tell me what doesn't lose to Dragon Dancing Mega Altaria. Celesteela, Milotic, loses to a like plus two return if it's not Flame Orb. Um, Greninja loses to it. Moltres loses to it eventually, although obviously Moltres resists, but it doesn't really want to come in on rocks and take a boosted return. Rotom loses to it. Diancy doesn't really appreciate it. Roserade loses to it because we have that Flamethrower for coverage. Reuniclus loses to it. Garchomp loses to it. Licky Licky would be broken by it. And Gumi would lose to it. So I feel like that all I had to do was wear his team down with enough chip. Uh, with between rocks and the little bit of coverage with Flamethrower. To make sure that I win in the end game with this. And I felt like with things like Keanu Reeves for Dante. I would pressure that Celesteela and one or two other mons enough. To make sure that I could sweep late game. So... All that being said, let's jump into battle and see exactly how this team works. So here we are, guys, and we can see that he brings most of the most powerful ones on his team. There wasn't really anything that I expected to come that didn't come, I don't think. Let me just double check his team. Um, maybe the Moltres. The Moltres was probably the only thing, and the Mega Diancy. They were the two things that could have come, but everything he brought is powerful. I have to say, I think he has arguably one of the best drafts in the league much as i liked my matchup here it's not because his draft is bad it's just because i think mega altaria has a good matchup against him once one thing is broken uh, but the rest of his team is still very very powerful and very very scary so when we got into this game i realized that, okay if i broke celesteela as i say mega altaria with enough chip on uh potential av rosa raid potential bulky celesteela with enough chip on those two things mega altaria just went to town and cleaned up so they were the two things that i wanted to pressure in particular and looking at his team i thought his most likely leads were fast u-turning or spikes greninja maybe t-spikes greninja uh potential rocks garchomp or spikes or t-spikes rosa raid if he led with any of those three um, I felt like Keanu Reeves was a really good lead. If I could potentially catch him U-turning out from the uh, Greninja into the Celesteela, I would get massive damage on that, or decent damage on that, I should say. If I could catch the Garchomp or the um, Roserade staying in with the Tri-Attack, I would definitely two-hit KO those. 
So I just decided to lead off with Keanu Reeves, and this is not going slow enough. I'm going to have to slay that down. Um, and he actually decides to switch out uh, with the guard chump. Let's just go back, sorry. He leads with the guard chump. Pretty standard stealth rock lead. He can't be sure that I'm not going to ice beam him here. So he switches out into the Milotic because I fire off a tri attack. There's no reason for me to make a read. That's what this set is here for. And we do 56% to this Milotic because he reveals to be Flame Lord. This first turn tells me so many things. One, I two hit KO Milotic always with Keanu Reeves. That is amazing. Two, he is not Yachi Berry Garchomp in my opinion. Otherwise, he stays in and he sets up his rocks or he hurts me there. What does that mean? He's more than likely Z Garchomp. So we have to watch out for that Z Stone Edge into Mandibuzz. It's a potential threat. However, there's not a lot we can do about it. And for the, now that this thing is down to 44%, the next time Keanu Reeves comes in, he either sacks something or he goes into Celesteel and gives me that chip I want. So turn one, I'm already like brilliant. Fantastic start, exactly what I wanted. We just fire off another try attack and he doesn't want to sack the Milotic, so he does actually go into the Celesteela. We do 37% and then we see the leftovers recovery. The problem here is, yes, I can fire off another try attack and we can take him down to about 32%, but then he gets Leech Seed recovery, then he gets to protect and get leftovers recovery and Leech Seed recovery again. So if leftovers gives him 12% across the two turns, Leech Seed, because I'm a max HP variant, let's say that gives him another 12%, it's going to heal back 24% when I'm only doing 37. We're only actually going to do another 13 on him and then he doubles out into something else. 13% on this thing probably isn't worth it when I'm going to lose quite a lot on Keanu Reeves, which is one of my most important Pokemon here. So I instead decided to double out into Miltank. I'm thinking that if he goes for the Leech Seed, I'm going to prevent that recovery and get my Sap Sipper, which I do. He can't know that I'm not Body Slam and he probably won't want to risk the Paralysis, so I think he'll switch out here and I go for the Stealth Rocks. But he does risk it and just goes for the Toxic. He's obviously not too worried about the Paras because, uh, because it's a bulky set. It's not a setup set, which I can understand. And he goes out into guard chomp here um, as I just get off the heal bell. I feel like I can just play pretty safely. Yes, the Celesteel is starting to get some leftover recovery, but that's fine. It can't really touch me at all. Um, and he actually doubles into Milo here, which is an amazing play. I wish I had Seismic Tossed. I was so close to Seismic Tossing, but I actually go into Old World to try and wall the Garchomp if I can on potential Earthquake. He makes a great play going into Milotic, knowing that he can outspeed this and recover on it. Um, but I can just U-turn and go back into Porygon Z, which suits me just fine. Because I say to him here, give me that Celesteela again. This time you're going to take Rocks damage and you're going to take Tri-Attack damage. But he actually stays in and goes for the Toxic. It's not great for me. I don't want Keanu Reeves to be Toxic. But if I can get another Heal Bell off with Miltank, it'll be okay. And I've actually made sure that Milotic is gone. So now he does not have a switch into Tri-Attack other than Celesteela. He hasn't really had one since turn two. But when he got that little bit of recovery, it was a bit scary. He goes out into Guard Chomp here, um, and I go back out into Mandibuzz again um, as he just gets off his Stealth Rocks. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm not quite sure what this set is. There's no Leftovers, there's no Yachi, and he is Z, but he's Z Devastating Drake, Z Outrage, I'm guessing. It doesn't do too much, but I actually Whirlwind here uh, just because I'm very scared of the sub. With hindsight, if he was a Stealth Rock set without Leftovers or Yachi, he probably would never be sub. But I just panicked a little bit, I think, there, where I could have just roosted off any Z move, um, and I went for the Whirlwind. I think that was a mistake. But we bring out this Roserade, which is something that I would quite like to get damage on, so I'm not too disheartened here. Uh, and as he fires off a Sludge Bomb, we just go for a Roost, because I'm pretty confident that I can take any hit from this. Unfortunately, he gets the Poison on me, which sucks. I can still take any hit from this thing reasonably well, um, but not fantastically well. So I think we just go for another Roost, thinking that he probably won't stay in a spam Sludge Bomb, which he doesn't. He brings in the Celesteela. Now again, I have to be careful of Leech Seed Recovery and everything else. Uh, so I just go for the U-turn here, not thinking that he'll outspeed me, but he does. Uh, and he actually gets the flinch. And this is where I start to make a couple of misplays for a couple of turns. That flinch frustrated me, and I didn't need the U-turn chip. And I was well aware that U-turn was going to do like 2%. So I was like, do you know what? I'm not going to risk staying in taking another air slash and getting worn down more. The reason that I would use U-turn is for momentum to scout what he would go into, but it doesn't seem to me like he has any reason to switch out here. He can just keep firing off air slash slashes and flinching me down with my toxic. So I pull a hard switch this turn into mill tank, just seems like my best play, but he actually goes out into Greninja. And this really sucks for me because mill tank is physically defensive, not specially defensive, so it doesn't want to be in on a Greninja. Not even a little bit, so I have to kind of double back out here into Mandibuzz 
Um, I can at least kind of pressure the defog and make him kill me and give me a free switch back into Keanu Reeves or Durant, something like that. Um, and he, as he goes for the spikes, he actually goes for the taunt. And I had seen that he'd got taunt on this thing from earlier um, when he taunted the... Or is this the first time we see... This is the first time we see taunt, I think. But expecting him to bring taunt because he said, again, just like he said that my team is very subable on, um, he has said that my team is taunt bait a little bit. So expecting him to go for the taunt, I do just fire off the U-turn. I at least can get some damage on this thing. That's my thinking. And potentially put it in a uh, vacuum wave range. That slow pivot is awesome into Infernape because now I'm like, okay, I don't think if you have spikes and you have taunt, what else do you have? Hydro Pump, Dark Pulse, maybe T-Spikes, Dark Pulse, maybe Poison uh, Jab or Gunk Shot, sorry, U-Turn. I don't think you have Water Shuriken. I don't think you have priority at this point. You outspeed all of my draft. You need coverage for the Altaria or you get walled by it. You've already shown two out of four moves. I feel like you're going to want some sort of stab. So I feel fairly safe that he doesn't have Water Shuriken. So I can just click Vacuum Wave here. And he switches out, which really makes me think, okay, he doesn't have Water Shuriken. Vacuum Wave does 29%. I had to click it there, otherwise I just lost that Greninja potentially, depending on his set. Um, so yes, we don't get much on the guard chomp, but it's fine. We just go out into Old World and sack that off. And then this was my biggest misplay of the game. This was really a huge misplay for here. Right now, I have one Mon on the team, which comes out and potentially could almost win me this game at this moment. And that is Durant. Durant is my Reuniclus counter. I put it on the team to deal with Reuniclus. I sub on Reuniclus, and if he has HP fire, fine. I click X Scissor, and I probably drop him on his head. But chances are he doesn't have HP fire. I get a substitute up. He has to go out into something like Roserade or Garchomp or Celesteela. He has to take Rocks, and then he has to take two hits from me behind a sub, and I break another one of his mons. But I panic here. We're 19 turns in. In my opinion, I'm playing superbly well. I'm handling everything excellently, and I really have an opening to win the game. And I panic, and I click this way too fast. And instead of going out into Durant, I go out into Keanu Reeves, thinking, okay, let me flush out the Celesteela again. There was really no need for me to do that. And again, I click Shadow Ball, where I should click Tri-Attack, because ultimately, if I click Tri-Attack... Sorry, he does a side shot, which gets 41%. Huge damage. If I click Tri-Attack there, I guarantee to hit KO the Reuniclus, and nothing else can come in. As I said, the only thing that can come in is the Celesteela, which is at 81%. It's going to take about 36 to 40, something like that, from the Tri-Attack. It's going to put it down in range of some other things to revenge kill it. He then won't have switch-ins to things like Wukong. I always have to click Tri-Attack there, but I click Shadow Ball, which gives him a very easy switch because he knows I'm Specs from the damage I've done. He can just go out into Greninja and take this on the chin. I can't switch out because I'm now in Stealth Rock range at 10%. So with this Shadow Ball, I only do 36%. But I think, well, it's not the end of the world. I'm pretty confident he doesn't have Water Shuriken. So I can just go out into Infernape, into Wukong. I click Vacuum Wave. I kill this thing. And we'll just have to play the Pivot game. I still have Durant in the back. However, he does have Water Shuriken, which completely took me aback. Um, we can't see his sets on this. But yeah, he had Taunt. Uh, spikes water shuriken at this point and I was like okay he can't have coverage for the Altaria surely but expecting him to fire off a taunt here so that I can't dragon dance I just click return to take out this uh, Greninja I would have loved to have dragon dance here and potentially try to go for game but it just there was just no way he goes out into this thing which uh, I don't believe we've seen a set I think that it could potentially be scarf to outspeed a dragon dance set um, so thinking that he's scarf sludge bomb I go into Fedanti and he clicks Hidden Power. Now, I can't entirely remember. I think this was like Hidden Power. I want to say Hidden Power Ground. What was his Hidden Power? It wasn't Hidden Power Poison, obviously. Uh, it wasn't Hidden Power Fire because it wasn't super effective. It wasn't Hidden Power Ice. Uh, was it Hidden Power... F no, Fairy doesn't exist. What was his Hidden Power? Anyway, whatever his hidden power is, he fires it off here. It's neutral to Fedanti, but Fedanti's not living anything. Uh, Durant is very frail. So it drops, and that's game. That's game here. I can't possibly win at this point. Um, I just go out into How Now and have to try and fire off some seismic tosses, maybe wear some things down, maybe go for a bit of a stall of war. Uh, but ultimately, I don't want to try and stall him out. If he doesn't have setup on this thing, 
then maybe I have a chance to stall him out, and I've just got to do that, frankly. That's my play, and I misclick here Stealth Rocks because I'm so stressed. Uh, it wasn't meant to be like a disrespectful, like, oh, nothing kind of play to him. It wasn't like that. I genuinely misclicked. Uh, he knows that. I uh, Seismic Toss here on his recover, and I'm thinking, geez, this is going to be a long game. It's going to be a lot of milk drinks, a lot of Seismic Tosses, and we're just going to play the stall game. But if that's what we have to do, that's what we have to do. I have Mega Altaria in the back with Roost as well, that could potentially do well here. Um, but he reveals to have the Calm Mind, and so I know at this point that I can't win this game. I just can't do anything. He's going to be able to set up on me. I have to go for the Seismic Toss, just in case he goes for the kill here, predicting my switch into Altaria. He doesn't, he makes a safe play, completely fair on him. Uh, he fires off another Psyshock. Shock, it's still doing next to nothing. Um, in my opinion, at some point here, I probably should have gone into Altaria and fired off a return just to preserve some differential at the very least. Um, because this was a very specially defensive Reuniclus, not a physically defensive one. But I was kind of twisted at this point. I was completely mad with myself and um, I wasn't making good plays. So I didn't even think of preserving differential. I just kind of played this out. So we'll now let this go fast because you know what's happening here. Uh, he can just keep wearing me down this way. GG to my man Stromphal. Obviously the game ends here. I do go out into Altaria trying to catch him on a recover here. But he actually just goes for the size shock. Um, so that sucks that I tried that so late and it didn't come off. So I could have maybe preserved some differential. As I say, there were two turns that really mattered to me here. One that I rushed and went into PZ on the Reuniclus had I gone into Durant and subbed. Um, Stromphal, if you're watching, please give me your feedback. But I think I had a really good chance to win there from behind a sub. Um, obviously, your sets make a difference. But just in terms of the damage that I would have put on everything, if you had HP Fire, of course, that would have made it really difficult. We saw Calm Mind recover uh, Psy Shock, so it's possible he had HP Fire. But if he didn't, I think I had a really, really good time there behind a sub. Um, even if I didn't get behind a sub, just hitting him with an X scissor potentially would have been amazing on this Reuniclus. And then the other misplay, um, in my opinion, was... What was the other misplay? Was clicking Shadow Ball and not clicking Tri Attack once I was in with Keanu Reeves. Because if I click Tri Attack, he had to let Reuniclus go down or he had to go into... Um, Go into the Celesteela, and if he went into the Celesteela, he took about 30%, and then he killed Keanu Reeves, and I got to bring in Durant, and we were in a much better position. Instead, he went into the Greninja on the Shadow Ball, killed the uh, Keanu Reeves, and then I had to bring out Infernape, which lost. So in terms of positioning, I would have been in such a better position had I clicked Tri-Attack. I needed to think a few turns ahead, which I'm a bit gutted about, because in my opinion, that has been a strength of mine as of late that I've been really working on, is trying to plan ahead. Uh, so... Yeah, GG to my man Stromfall. As I said, one of my best friends in this community thoroughly deserved a win. Me saying I could have played this better is not meant as a disrespectful thing to him. He fully, fully deserved his win as ever. He is just such a reliable, solid battler that wins over and over again because he is very, very good at this game. But uh, one thing I will say is a huge thank you to him because he has taught me a lot about Pokemon, helped me a lot. And after this game, he sent me some messages which which well and truly made my day um he just basically said what a difficult game this was how much he feels i've improved since even our battle in owl um and how much he thinks i can continue improving and that means an awful lot to me so gg to him and thank you and thank you to you guys for watching hopefully you enjoyed this battle in my opinion this was a really really good battle this channel is all about learning competitive play, trying to improve. In my opinion, I have been improving. Hopefully, you guys have been improving as well. And this one, I think, is a really great example of a battle played half well and half badly and things that I can continue to improve on and maybe you guys can too. This is one that I feel like I can learn a lot from. So, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And next week, we go up against Elliot, my man, the one guy. We've had so many battles with him at this point. Um, he is also undefeated going into next week, so that is going to be an incredibly difficult battle. Hope you guys are looking forward to that. If you're hyped, let me know down below. And hopefully we can get a win and keep positive, because at this point we are 3-2 and two in Owl, uh, in Owl, in PEBA, in PEBA. So hopefully we can keep pushing and go 4-2 and two and stay positive at the start of the season. This is still the best start to a season we've ever made, um, but we'll have to see how it goes. Anyway, thank you so much for liking around me, guys, and I'll catch you again next time.